Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Matter for Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A series. It's fall 2019, we've been traveling a little bit, and you'll have to forgive me, I've come up with just a slight bit of a head cold, uh, but just like the U.S. Postal Service, uh, neither rain, nor sleet, nor snow can stop us from answering your questions, which we always do. If you send your questions to admin at madriveroutfitters.com, we answer every single one. And if we wind up answering it here on the YouTube channel, of course, we're going to send you a free hat and a fly box uh, as a thank you for participating in this series. And as always, we thank you for participating and interacting with Mad River Outfitters. And be sure, if you like what we do here on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free, it's easy, and it really helps us out. And that way you won't miss an episode. So uh, let's jump right in today. We've got uh, three fairly easy ones. And uh, this is a little bit of a correspondence, which we did uh, respond to just here in the past couple of days. But Jimmy, J-I-M-I, -I. Jimmy says, after a year of heavy fishing, my rod's handle has a pretty gross coating of sweat and oils from my hand. Got any fancy tricks for cleaning it? Well, Jimmy, this, this happens a lot. We, get, uh, we have a lot of demo rods and school rods around here. Uh, of course, we use our stuff a lot. And yeah, there is a pretty simple trick. And I'll tell you, this is one of the rare occasions where I'm going to recommend a product that Mad River Outfitters doesn't sell. And that is Murphy's Oil Soap. Um, I'm sure available in your town and a variety of different places. But this stuff works really great on cork grips. And really simple, although I don't have an exact setup, but you might... Just use a simple uh, damp cloth, for example. I just grabbed a cloth out of the bathroom here. You're just gonna put a little uh, the oil soap on there. And uh, kind of the, I'm gonna use the rough side of the cloth and just kind of buff it out a little bit. And then you're gonna see that it's pulling all that dirt and grime right off the cork handle. And you can see the amount of dirt, sweat, and stuff that I'm pulling off and uh, it takes you a little bit of a little bit of work but you can really almost restore a cork grip darn near to its original condition uh, with just a little elbow grease and a little bit of this Murphy's oil soap and it works just great you're gonna see a difference and then I'll take kind of the dry side of that cloth and buff it out a little bit and that's where it really starts to shine you can see a pretty big difference in this part of the handle and this which I just did a basic uh, cleaning there with the Murphy's oil soap uh, so really simple just have yourself a cloth like I said a little bit of a rough side so it kind of digs in a little bit obviously you don't want anything too rough to scuff up the cork but just works great you can uh, kind of refurbish your cork it looks like uh, darn near brand new and it's pretty cool, uh, Jimmy, I responded via email and Jimmy emailed me back literally hours later and he says, that, hey Brian, that worked a treat. Also got to try my new NXT reel and new fly lines y'all sent me. They cast great, can't wait for January for some winter action in the Driftless. So maybe from the Wisconsin area. So uh, there you go, Jimmy, glad it worked for you. And uh, for those of you out there that might be wondering how to clean your cork grip, uh, Little Murphy's Oil Soap will do wonders on that. So there you go, kind of cool tip. And again, a rare product that's not available at madriveroutfitters.com. Uh, next up, hi Brian. Oh, this is from Clint Van Warmer from Foxburg, Pennsylvania. And Clint says hi brian i i just got done watching episode nine of getting started in fly fishing and i would also be a mr c in my case haha -ha. it was very helpful 
So thanks so much. Whenever I have a problem or I just want to watch stuff on fly fishing, your channel is the first stop. Well, thank you, Clint. We appreciate that. I was wondering, say I have a nine foot eight or nine weight fly rod and I want to throw tw tiny 22 dry flies to steelhead. Could I still use the 6X leader and be able to cast just fine? Thanks, Clint Warmer. Well, Clint, a uh, couple of answers here. First of all, you know what? Uh, I'm, I, I'm just never going to say never. You can do, as our good friend Flip Pallet always says, this is America. Can we go hunting tonight? We can. Uh, it's America. Um, but first thing, why would you ever throw a size 22 dry fly to steelhead? I, I, I don't think that's ever going to work, but I'd love for you to prove me wrong and send me some pictures. Uh, but you're just not going to throw a size 22 dry fly at steelhead. Not, I don't think on this planet. Uh, but let's say if you did, first and foremost, here's the big problem. If you took a 6X leader, which is really what you would need for throwing a size 22 dry fly, you're going to find that the butt section on this leader is 17 thousandths, okay? As you've seen on our website, as you've heard me talk about many, many times, don't ever trust a leader unless they tell you what the uh, stiffness of the material is and then also the diameter of the butt section. This is actually as or more important than the diameter of the tippet, 6X. This has a 17 thousandth butt section, as would roughly most 6X leaders, and it's also a medium to a medium soft material, more for throwing trout type flies. That's very important to know the stiffness of the material that you're buying. For example, a bass leader or a saltwater leader is going to be typically very stiff, whereas more of a trouty kind of leader is going to be more limp. So this is 17 thousandths of medium uh, to medium limp material. Well, <clears throat> in order to, for a butt section on an eight weight or a nine weight, theoretically needs to be about 22 thousandths to 24 thousandths and it really should be stiff material, okay? You've seen me do the bell curve test before, maybe? And in order for the butt section of your leader to absorb properly, the amount of energy coming off the tip of that eight weight or nine weight, it has to be 22 or 24 thousandths stiff material. So there's no way that 17 thousandths limp material is gonna be able to absorb that energy coming off your eight weight or nine weight. This leader is gonna flop all over the place. It's gonna be a casting nightmare. Having a 6X tippet on an eight weight or a nine weight is probably just not gonna work. I mean, again, you can give it a shot, but chances are that eight weight or nine weight, when you go to set the hook, um, there's not enough flexibility in that rod. You're going to break 6X left and right. Um, just not a feasible thing to do. And 8 weight or a 9 weight is just not really a dry fly rod. And you really can't, um, you really can't just buy a packaged trout fishing leader off the wall and especially loop it onto an 8 weight or a 9 weight. It's just not going to work. So um, I, I hope that makes sense. And Clint, if you have any further questions, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call here at the shop. Um, but uh, there you have it. I never say never, uh, but some pretty good scientific reasons on why a 17 thousandths uh, limp, fairly limp butt section is just not gonna work off an eight weight or a nine weight, okay? And let's see, last but not least, Jared B. And Jared B says, first off, I want to say thanks for the videos and all, and all that you make. They were the first lessons I learned in fly fishing, and I wouldn't have started up if it weren't for you all making fly fishing accessible to so many people. Well, thank you, Jared. That's, it's a great honor to be able to do what we do. And I am relatively new to fly fishing, and I have recently learned a lot of more experienced anglers fish with multiple flies on one rig. 
This is a new concept to me, but I definitely want to give it a shot. What type of multi-fly rigs would you recommend to a newbie fishing for rainbow trout and brown trout in NWA? And how do I tie it? I've heard of the hopper dropper, but I'm certain there's more out there, which yes, there is, but that's a great one. Uh, thanks for all the helpful and informative videos that you and the team make. They make all the difference. Cheers, Jared B. Well, Jared, yes, fishing multiple fly rigs is an important step in your progress, and it's a question that we get a lot. Uh, so I tell you what, let's pull out the, uh, the marker board here, and I'll draw up a couple quick scenarios. And, of course, um, pretty simple equation. If one fly is good, two flies are better. Okay, Jared, so uh, it's really pretty simple, uh, but again, we get a lot of questions about this. And let's say, first and foremost, you mentioned the hopper dropper. This is a very, very popular rig um, and the one that's most recognized. But let's say uh, you tied on your grasshopper, okay, and forgive my drawing skills, but we're just going to make a little hopper there. What I do is I typically tie to the bend of the hook, okay? So I'm going to tie a clinch knot right here to the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to drop my nymph down and um, tie that on to the eye of the hook as I normally would. Tie on my nymph. And you can make this piece of tippet. Um, uh, usually I make it somewhere around 12 to 18 inches in length. I typically don't want to go much more than 12 or 18 inches or it starts to become a little cumbersome in casting and it also has a, a higher tendency of tangling. But a lot of folks often ask, does this change your leader at all? Do you have to do any new mathematics? And you really don't. Let's say you're tying this hopper on say 2x or 3x tippet or actually let's go ahead and let's say that you're tying it on 3x tippet, which is probably about right. <clears throat> I'm going to then, for my dropper, I'm going to tie on really whatever. I mean, it's probably something like 4x or 5x. Again, it's usually going to be based on the size of the fly. But again, it really doesn't matter because the momentum of the cast is going to carry that out there. So this portion of the tippet is not really that important and you really don't have to necessarily apply any math here. I would say this is almost always going to be 4x, 5x, maybe 6x if this is a very small nymph here. Now if you did have trouble casting this, if you found that it was collapsing on you, which would indicate that adding the nymph and the, dr the nymph dropper here was too much weight and it was collapsing this part of the tippet, you may go up to 2x. So if your math told you 3x, but you're going to add a dropper, you may go up one, one thicker to the 2x, and that might help you cast this whole rig. But other than that, there's really nothing different that you need to do. You really don't need to adjust the length of the leader. Uh, if anything, I might go up one in the x and then just simply hang a nymph off the bend of the hook is going to be the best case scenario. Um, another thing that we'll often do is a uh, something like an attractor dry, like a stimulator or say an Alcair caddis. This is something that we do here on our home waters a lot on the MAD. I'll throw a stimulator, a uh, Madam X, uh, an elk hair caddis, of course, Kelly Gallup's butch caddis, uh, some of my favorites, and then hang a nymph off, again, usually about 12 to 18 inches, and then your elk hair or your attractor serves as uh, not only uh, an attractor dry that the fish will oftentimes come up and eat, but it serves as a strike indicator that t tells you when they've eaten the nymph. Now, most often, um, I am fishing a two nymph rig, okay? And again, same story here. I'm usually gonna be to the first fly, you know, you're tapered down as you normally would, do the mathematics. Let's say I'm tapered down to 4X and I'm gonna tie my first nymph on 
um, as I normally would. And then again, I tie to the bend of the hook. If this is a standard indicator type rig, I might have split shot up here on the tippet. I've got an indicator somewhere on the leader. I tie to the bend of the hook. And this makes for much fewer tangles. Uh, it casts better in, in my opinion. And again, I might go 4X or 5X on this tippet, maybe 6X, that's gonna mostly be dictated by the size of the fly. I'm gonna again go 12 to 18 inches, usually not much more than that. And a lot of times what I do is I fish a, like a bead headed nymph here or a heavy nymph, maybe even these days one of the jig type flies that folks are using Euro nymphing. And then I go with something unweighted here, like a soft tackle. Um, in fact, one of my favorite top flies here is called the Trophy Nymph. Uh, the Trophy Nymph is one of my favorite go-to attractor bead-headed nymphs. And then I'll throw on a green, yellow, or orange soft-hackled fly behind it right here. And that <laughs> allows for this bead head, al uh, along with the split shot here, to be bouncing bottom. And then the soft tackle can kind of be riding up in the water column and it's just an absolutely deadly rig. Although you can use anything you want. You can put on an, another bead head. Um, you could put on, another one that I do is put on a San Juan worm. In this case, of course, nothing beats a San Juan worm. You should always have them with you when you're trout fishing. Put on San Juan worm and a soft tackle or a San Juan worm and a, a pheasant tail. Uh, just an absolutely deadly rig. And again, my split shot is always going to go above the first fly. Now, <clears throat> one, one note is if I'm fishing a drop shot rig. A drop shot rig is where you're going to have the split shot on a tag and below your bottom fly. In that case, I do tie my flies on. Sometimes I'll have two flies maybe three flies on a drop shot rig, and I will in that case tie to the eye of the fly. It allows, because the split shot is bouncing bottom and your leader is more vertical, uh, tying to the eye of the fly allows for a more natural profile of the fly, uh, the way that leader is set up. And of course you wouldn't have the split shot here. You're gonna have the split shot at the bottom of the rig. So I do tie to the eye of the fly if I'm doing a drop shot rig. If a standard split shot and indicator rig, uh, I tie to the bend of the hook. Um, another popular rig, and you've heard Kelly Gallup talk about this. He talks about it in his new book, Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout 2. And it's a two streamer rig. And usually you're gonna have the larger of the two streamers here and then <clears throat> run a smaller a lot of times I see those guys out in Montana fishing a zonker. Um, and again, I'm obviously not an artist here, I apologize. But run this 12, 15 inches behind the bigger streamer and that can be a deadly rig as well. So pretty easy. Again, I'm usually tying to the bend of the hook. It's a little bit easier casting and eliminates tangles and super easy to do. But if I had to pick one rig to trout fish the rest of my life and I couldn't do anything else, I'm gonna fish a trophy nymph, which is a soft tackled pheasant tail bead head. I'm gonna put the appropriate split shot above it and I'm gonna fish a size 14 or 16 green soft tackle behind it. So Jared, I hope that helps. Of course, send me an email or pick up the phone and call me if you have any further questions and make sure that uh, you send us your name and address so we can get you out that free hat and fly box. Well, as always friends, thanks for watching. We really appreciate you being here and participating in our Q&A series. Be sure to send those questions, any and all questions, send them to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. We really can't get to them in the comments section on YouTube or on social media. But if you send them right here to the shop via email, we will get you an answer usually within hours. Um, all questions are answered and no question is left behind. So thanks as always, we really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.